Hi, my name's Johnny. I'm Ella. And we're from the Santa Barbara Middle School Team Press, and today we're here with... Julie Snyder. Nice to meet you. It's nice to meet you, too. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. When you were developing the idea for Serial, did you have a specific criteria to measure success? Did you think that your podcast would ever become this famous? No, I did not. We had the... We did have kind of a criteria for success, though. We thought... Um, not many people really listen to podcasts, so we thought like the world of it was sort of small. Um, the number we were shooting for was 300,000 downloads because that's like kind of a good solid number in the podcast world. That kind of is means that um, you're doing enough that you can kind of sustain yourself, you know? And then um, we, we launched the show and we got 300,000 downloads in five days, which just like kind of blew our minds. I know, and then I just, this week I checked and... Um, We've done now season one and season two, um, and all together we've had 175 million downloads. Wow. I know, right? It was great. It was great. So it definitely exceeded our, 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 our criteria, our initial criteria. That's why I was able to quit my job and go work for Serial full time. What's a biased opinion out of um, your work and give all sides a fair chance? I think the um, important thing for us to do is to try and be honest about what it is that we think and where we're coming from, and then try and follow all of the traditional rules of journalism of making sure that you've reached out to everybody um, who is part of the story, anybody who has a take, anybody who has a different point of view, and you just try and accurately reflect every single person's point of view. That's, that's kind of the goal that we go for when, when, when we're doing the story. It's, it's sort of a very traditional sort of approach to journalism that you get all sides. And, um, what do you hope your audiences get out of listening to the Serial Podcast? Oh, that's interesting. I think, um, I think that I think more about what I'm getting out of it, and then I think I hope people get it, what I'm trying to say. Do you know what I mean? Um, but I realize that's not always going to happen, that everybody has kind of like different things that they take away from it. So I think the main thing that I usually hope is that people come out of it um, with a little bit of a sense of empathy so that uh, they think about the story in a way that maybe is a little more complicated and a little more emotional, um, sometimes a little kinder than maybe um, they had initially thought. Sorry, you're still looking in the sun. No, I'm good. <laughs> I'm fine. There's a lot riding on what story you choose. Once Serial commits to a story, you're in for a huge amount of time and work, and the participants come under scrutiny of millions of listeners. How do you make the decision to pursue a specific story? That's interesting. Um, it takes, it, it, we do have to, we spend a lot of time trying to think about it because, yeah, it, like you said, we're going to be kind of living in that world for like the next nine to 15 months. Um, so we better really like the story. We better think that um, it, it deserves to be told and it deserves this amount of attention. And you're right that the people who participate in it come under a lot of scrutiny. So I think for them, they have to think that this is worth it for them. So um, I think those are the those are kind of the criteria, though, that we think about when we're choosing a story. Like, is this something that I want to spend this long doing? Is this something that the participants think is worth doing? Um, do they think it's important that they want this story out there and that they're willing to, like, sometimes there's a risk, you know, and, and, and there's a payment, I guess, um, of time and energy and commitment to do it. So, like, does it rise to that level? And Adnan may be given the chance of a new trial, and his lawyer, C. Justin Brown, credited Serial indirectly saying that this, w that this was first ever opening source case, where he had essentially essentially thousands of investigators working for me. Coming up with new evidence, what's your take on the potential for both good and bad coming out of your new your investigations? The potential for good and bad to come out of the investigation? Um, I mean, the potential for good is that you can have things like um, 
Uh, there was just recently a hearing in Adnan's case of where they, uh, it's a little bit like legally technical, it's not its not a new trial or anything like that, but where the court has said, we think that maybe this deserves a second look, we want to hear more evidence, we want to take uh, more information into account when we make the decision about what we should do in the future. That that feels to me like that's the way we want the criminal justice system to be working. We, we, we want to feel like, you know, God forbid, like someday, you know, you or I or any of us, you know, we, we're at the mercy of the court. We want to feel like um, we're getting a fair shake, right? That we want everybody to understand kind of what it is that, um, where we're coming from and all of the facts and the context around it. So that, those are kind of like the, the best outcomes, I think, of where it feels like um, maybe we're correcting a wrong or we're correcting the system or we're trying to make it so that our institutions work the way that we have the faith that they will. And then I think like the worst thing that can come out of the investigations, um, I think are sometimes like kind of unintended consequences. Uh, we did have on, on, on that story, there were people's personal lives who uh, they were really violated and we had tried to kind of protect it and I think we thought we were naive and we thought that we could provide more protection than we were able to and so I, I definitely think that there is um, there was like kind of a price to be paid and people people paid that price. We're 12 and 13 practicing journalism for either the first or second time what should we think about journalism as a big picture? I think um, for the big picture of journalism, I mean, essentially, there, there are kind of two parts of it, right? You're basically, you're, you're gathering facts and um, you're adhering to those facts, but you're also trying to interpret them for uh, a broader audience, right? So that not everybody has to go around and spend like four days reporting in order to understand the thing you do, right? You're gonna distill it all and give it out to an audience. And I think um, there is an importance to making sure that you keep an open mind and you try and as accurately as possible um, kind of convey to the public uh, what everything it is that you have experienced while you've been reporting that story. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. So what do you think is the greatest thing a journalist can um, achieve? Oh, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, it's not awards and stuff like that. You know, they give out a lot of awards for journalism, like a lot. Um, yeah. And so I, I don't think it's probably that. I think probably feeling... Um, for me, I think that's the only way I can kind of respond to it. For me, um, feeling as though we have made an impact. That's, that, that, that's a, huge, a huge reward for being a journalist, that you feel like um, your work made a difference. Um, what pitfalls should we look out for as um, creators and consumers of journalism? <sighs> I think probably um, oversimplifying things. I think that that um, we should both, both when we're creating journalism, but also when we're we're reading and consuming other stories. I think um, if something seems like very simple and cut and dry, uh, it probably isn't. We should probably assume that there's more going on. Can I see the one? Can I, I honestly one? Which didn't, number? I didn't read this I before I talked about it. <laughs> Which one is that? It's Let's tell us about going, tell meta us dimension. about that meta dimension of dealing with the show, a show about the show. So basically what the question is, you know what meta means? Uh, meta means like when you're sort of existing on a level above... Um, I know, I can't even explain it. But basically, what, are, what it is what we're saying is, is that, so we produce a show, and now we're going on the road, and we're giving speeches about our show, so it's kind of like we're doing a show about our show, and then that exists on a meta level. It's like you're discussing, actually, the architecture of what it is that you're doing, and it's very, very weird, is what I would say. It's really weird for us to go out and talk about the show. It, and we're putting on a show while we're talking about the show, and we are very aware of the fact that it's really odd. It's an odd thing to be doing. But it was really actually very helpful because um, it forced us, we had kind of just gone through this whole experience that, um, that we didn't anticipate and there was like a lot of response to, to the show that we did and, this, and the reporting and then we even just emotionally with the um, with each other and the things that we were creating and with the characters in the story. And honestly, if we didn't have to go out and talk to other people about what had just happened, I'm not sure um, we ever would have um, completely made sense of it. 
uh, ourselves, you know what I mean? I think I probably would have just still be living in a world of confusion about the whole thing. So it's kind of really nice that it forced us having to go on stage and talk to people about the show. It forced us to actually have to articulate what the experience was like and what we made of it. So it was actually very, it's very healthy. You guys should do it. <laughs> Everyone should go around and give stories and shows. I really hope he edits this. <laughs> okay. Final question. Yeah. If you could give us one homework assignment, what would it be? Oh my gosh. I won't do math. <laughs> oh my god. I wouldn't be able to um I wouldn't be able to tell you if it was right or not anyway. Um uh, let's see. One homework assignment I think would be You guys are still like at the very beginning of your career, you know? Have you guys read um or seen or heard a piece of journalism that you really admired? Like where you're like this actually it was both really interesting and it was sort of fun. You're making us think now. Um, I think I can't remember exactly what article it was, but mm -hmm. there was an article in a National Geographic magazine that was really an eye opener. What was it about? I forgot. Oh, you can't remember. I can't remember, <laughs> but it was I knew that it was kind of surprising to find that article in like um not only reporting on facts but also reporting on like a person. Yeah. I think for me like the first time I read an article that was um non-fiction journalism that I enjoyed as much as like maybe watching an episode like a rerun of a TV show um was like where I was all like oh oh and that was surprising like I enjoyed that just as much you know and um I think for a good homework assignment sometimes is find the thing that you really liked and then um when you're first starting try and kind of copy it see if you can make a version of that and then you know the goal ultimately is that you go beyond that and and then you create something that's entirely your own someday but a good place to start is 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 copying the things that you like Thank you yeah, so much. Yeah, sure. Thank, Thank you. you you guys. Thank you were you. so nice. These were wonderful questions. I really I really appreciate it. Thank you so much for your time. Thanks. Thank you. All right. And Thanks in guys. fact, she has been doing We've been, yeah, been doing a show about a <laughs> Have you been doing a show about a show? Kind of. We um there's a documentary made about well, uh, Team 26. This is currently Team 30 in Teen Press. Oh, you're kidding. It was showing at a couple of the film festivals. But um we've been going to some of those um With the those showings makers? with the film yeah with the mm -hmm. filmmaker and then also with some of the other cast that was in team 26 is it weird to be talking about like doing a show about your show it's well. definitely odd and like different yeah. for me because there's a difference between um the interviews that we were doing last year mm -hmm. and the interviews that we were doing this year oh. and my experience this year versus last year and that kind of um reflecting also back on seeing yourself on camera yeah totally <laughs> yeah. i'll bet i'll bet that's really yeah but it forces you to kind of um think about something that maybe you wouldn't have otherwise it's not like you probably sit around at night and think that much about <laughs> like your interviews or no. like what it is that you're doing or you know what i mean i don't know maybe you do We go on a few trips. Like we went, we were in San Francisco all last week. Oh no! I know you put in a ton of work on doing it. No. I guess more what I was thinking is, is like, like, do you wake up in the middle of the night and worry about it? Well, yep. no. Oh, My point was that we sometimes do. Like we were up to like eleven most of the nights. You in guys San really worked that hard. <laughs> it would. Well, it was because the conference went really late. You guys it are was... too young to be up that late. <laughs> <laughs> we found that, though, well, at least for me in the film, that um, I saw how I worded my questions and how I was able to have that eye contact. That also made me kind of revise what I was going to do in the next interview and realize how to make it better. Oh, that's great! So that was cool. Oh, yeah. that's helpful. Yeah. Oh, it takes it takes a lot of guts to watch yourself on camera. That's when <laughs> yeah. I'm really glad that I do radio. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like to see myself.